Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. As is well known, due to changes in the external environment, chip foundries such as TSMC and Samsung have lost the right to freely ship to China. To address this dependence on foreign suppliers for high-end chips, China has begun to develop a domestic semiconductor industry chain. Especially in the last two years, the domestic semiconductor industry chain has made technological breakthroughs in many key areas, gradually achieving domestic substitution of equipment and processes. SMIC, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, can produce chips equivalent to 7 nanometers without the aid of EUV lithography machines. With more and more official announcements from Chinese companies, the situation that ASML in the Netherlands feared has materialized, ASML's lithography machines could become obsolete at any time. According to normal business logic, no country in the world would build a completely domestic industry chain because globalized economic division of labor is the most efficient solution. However, the US chip restrictions on China have disrupted this free trade system. For Chinese companies to achieve self-sufficiency in high-end chips, they must start with self-sufficiency in basic raw materials and equipment. In 2019, the US launched its first round of sanctions against Huawei, cutting off its chip supply chain. In 2023, the US, Japan, and the Netherlands jointly imposed export restrictions specifically on lithography machines. ASML's EUV and high-end DUV equipment from the Netherlands and Nikon and Canon's mid-to-low-end lithography machines from Japan were all added to the ban list. By October 2024, the US had further tightened the DUV control threshold from 7 nanometers to 14 nanometers requiring special approval even for mid-range models like the 1980i. This escalating blockade was intended to freeze China's semiconductor industry at mature processes above 28 nanometers. However, they didn't anticipate that Chinese companies would choose a rural-to-urban strategy. Since high-end equipment was unavailable, they would first perfect mature processes, and use the profits to invest in advanced technology research and development. According to relevant data, China's total chip exports have exceeded 1.03 trillion yuan, a year-on-year -year increase of 20.3%, with export volume approaching 300 billion units. Most of these chips are mature process chips manufactured using 28 nanometers, or larger nanometers, primarily used in the automotive, industrial control, and IoT sectors. Domestically produced chips are 30 to 40 percent cheaper than their international counterparts, directly breaking down trade protectionism in Europe and the US and enabling large-scale sales of Chinese chips to the European and American international markets. Faced with China's high-quality, low-priced industrial chips, Texas Instruments, USA, and Infineon, Germany, were forced to reduce production capacity, laying off approximately 10% of their workforce. Meanwhile, Chinese companies, leveraging the revenue generated by these mature chips, have continuously increased their investment in advanced chip manufacturing, gradually breaking the long-term monopoly of foreign companies in the Chinese market. SMIC's new wafer fab in Shanghai, built in 2024, will add one wafer per year, producing 50,000 12-inch wafers annually, Huahong Semiconductors, based in Wuxi, will increase its monthly capacity by 20,000 wafers, gradually switching to 28 nanometers high-K metal gate technology. By the end of 2024, China's monthly 28 nanometers capacity had increased by 300,000 wafers, and its global market share jumped from 18% to 28%. In 2025, China's semiconductor industry will simultaneously focus on three core areas, with each official announcement from Chinese companies acting like a sharp sword aimed at ASML's Achilles heel. The first sword is Nanjing University Optoelectronics RF Photoresist. Don't underestimate this material. Currently, there are no more than 10 companies worldwide capable of manufacturing and supplying it in sufficient quantities. 
Previously, China relied on imports for 90% of its photoresist, with Japan's Shinetsu Chemical and JSR holding 70% of the global market share. On September 11th of this year, Nanjing University Optoelectronics officially announced that it had successfully broken the long-standing monopoly of foreign companies. Two RF photoresists have entered the mass production verification stage, with all core raw materials developed domestically. This marks a breakthrough in the domestic chip raw material sector, breaking Japan's long-standing monopoly. More importantly, this photoresist is used in 193 nanometers wavelength processes, supporting 90 to 14 nanometers nodes. A production line was built in 2021, and small-scale mass production was achieved in 2024, with monthly shipments of several hundred liters. According to JSR's financial report, its sales to China have declined by 12%. As Chinese companies master the formulation and production process of photoresist, the technological moat that Japanese companies were so proud of has begun to crumble. The second weapon is Shanghai Microelectronics 28 nanometers DUV lithography machine. Shanghai Microelectronics is a well-known company, a leading enterprise in China's lithography machine field. Shanghai Microelectronics boasts globally leading technology in front-end lithography equipment and has been continuously developing core technologies for DUV lithography machines in recent years. According to public information, in 2024, Shanghai Microelectronics 90 nanometers lithography machine achieved mass production and was delivered to several companies for power device production. In May 2025, the first 28 nanometers immersion DUV lithography machine was officially delivered, with a domestic production rate exceeding 70% and an energy density increase of 40%. This equipment has already been delivered 15 units to SMIC and Huahong Semiconductor, with a yield rate of 95%. The domestic production rate of core components has reached 50%. Although 10 to 15% of high-end components still rely on imports, the overall level of self-sufficiency has reached 85%. To promote the development of domestically produced DUV lithography equipment, the third phase of the National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund has focused on investing in the localization of DUV lithography machines. The goal for 2025 was to achieve 50% self-sufficiency in core components, a goal that has already been achieved ahead of schedule. The third key technology is the all-solid-state deep ultraviolet laser source developed by the Chinese Academy of Sciences. On March 25, 2025, the Chinese Academy of Sciences officially released its all-solid-state deep ultraviolet laser source technology, specifically designed for the needs of 3 nanometer chips. This solution uses lithium niobate crystals, reducing energy consumption by 70% and achieving a spectral purity of 0.01 picometers, completely bypassing ASML's fluorine laser route. This marks a breakthrough in the manufacturing technology of domestically produced lithography machine light sources. Compared to traditional EUV lithography machines, the cost of the core components of this all-solid-state solution is only one-third of that of ASML's traditional lithography machines. Through multi-exposure technology, DUV lithography machines can also achieve the production of 3 nanometer process chips at a lower cost.